wow. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. Before you take your seat, and while you take your seat, touch somebody on your right and your left, look at them and smile at them. Some of y'all ain't smiled since four fresh fires ago. While you smile and look at somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, you're in the right place. This is the right time to receive a miracle from the Lord. Tell somebody, I am a miracle. Look at them and say, I am a miracle. Tell one more person, say, I am a miracle. Now, if you're really excited about your future tonight, I would that you'd open up your mouth and give him a crazy praise. Oh, y'all too quiet. I said, if you're excited about your future, give him a crazy praise. If you're really expecting great things, open up your mouth and celebrate it. Oh, I just need a few more people that would love on him for a few more minutes. He's better than that. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy of praise. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy to be magnified. Indeed, I'm grateful to God for this opportunity to be able to be here for the first time. And you can be seated. I'm, I'm just honored to have this, this wonderful opportunity to be able to share in this capacity. I recognize that I'm not here because of my goodness, nor is it because of my kindness. But the reality is, is that we're all here because of the grace and mercy of God. The truth of the matter is, is that all of us should have been consumed. But isn't it great that God was so rich in mercy that he decided to love us, not for where we were, but for what he wanted us to be. The songwriter said it best. He said, he looked beyond my faults, and he saw me at the point of my need. Aren't you glad God looked past some, some stuff in your life? Y'all ain't got to say amen. But I'm glad that God looked past some foolishness in my life some of the things that would have disqualified me by your standards. But I'm grateful to God that he did not disqualify me, but he used that which I had gone through to allow it to be a witnessing tool so that people will understand that God can deliver. So I'm grateful to him tonight. Before I go any further, I, I must give honor to, uh, you know, God who was ahead of my life and center of my joy, but also I got to celebrate this great man, visionary pastor. Oh, y'all got to do better than that. You all don't understand. I'm going to try it one more time. Y'all got to give it up. Your pastor didn't invite me, but he did. You better give God some praise. Wow. You know, I... I, I, I picked with him a little bit in the back. I told him, I said, my, my, my little brother got invited to the church before I did. My, my brother is Dr. Hen Sapp, the comedian, and he'd been here. He was telling me all about church. I was like, I ain't never been here before. This is my first time. So it's a great privilege and honor. And, and, and the reason why I'm so honored to be here is because of the simple fact that right after the most difficult time that I've ever had to experience in my life, I was trying to make a, a transition change into a shift and I picked up the phone because I knew about a particular conference that he had and I've been invited in the past and never went but I wanted to make sure that after the fifth year of my wife passing I wanted to make sure that I was on course and redirecting my life and trying to make sure that I was doing all the things that are necessary in order to build the ministry side because I'd already taken care of making sure that the emotional and mental side of my life was balanced. I picked up the phone, I called him, I said, I want to come to the conference. And he said, ain't no room. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like Mary, Mary and Joseph, ain't no room in the end. And I said, well, you know, don't, you know, just, is there a stable anywhere? You got me? I don't have to be in the, I don't have to be in the, in the end, but if y'all just got a stable somewhere, and they, they made an adjustment, an allowance, and allowed me to come, and I didn't get a chance to stay with everybody else, but it was such an impactful moment that I made sure that I went um, to Bishop and thanked him and told him how much I appreciated him allowing me to come, and I ain't missing it ever again, because it is a life-changing experience. So, I, a lot of times people wait till you land up here to say thank you. And 
and then they crying and trying to make like they really loved you when they couldn't stand your guts. I can't get no help here. But when people are nice, you ought to be nice in return. So I just want to tell him to thank you. And you ain't never got to worry about asking me to do anything because the reality is, is if you ever call me, I promise you I'm going to be there. I promise you I'm going to be there. Now, I'm kind of messed up because he told me this was going to be a storefront experience. Now, I ain't never been to no storefront like this before. Let me tell you that right now. But I'm grateful to God. I'm, 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 I'm not going to hold you long tonight. There, there is something that the Spirit of the Lord has placed on my heart to share. And it's found in the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter number 8. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter number 8. Now, okay. I, now, now, even though the lights are a little low, I can still see. Be seated for a minute. Because when I, as soon as I say it, as soon as I say it, Bishop, as soon as I say it, Bishop Brown, that turn with me in the word of the Lord. I saw one sister in the church hunch her girlfriend, and she said, I know he ain't going to start preaching without singing something. I saw it. I saw it just clear as day. I just, I was like, I can't believe, sister girl. I said, turn in the word of the Lord. She just hunched her friend and said, you didn't tell me that he was preaching tonight. They said Wednesday night, Marvin Sapp was going to be here. I knew it was going to be a concert. I just knew it. Now, I do this all the time. Now, I'm, I'm just want you all to keep it 100, I promise you. I just want you to keep it 100. When they said that Bishop Marvin Sapp was coming, I need you to be honest with me. When they said that I was coming, how many of you all thought that it was going to be a concert on Wednesday night? See, 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 see. Let, let me tell you how, they, how you should have known it wasn't going to be a concert when they let you in the door for free. I can't get no help tonight. <laughs> no, 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 no. You should have known it. So that mom and Sam, new song is free. No, it ain't gonna be no concert tonight, girl. No, it ain't gonna be no concert. So I should have told you that. But, but I promise you, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sing that song that people love to hear me sing. But I'm gonna sing it after I preach. If I know y'all, if I sing it now, it's just going to be me and Bishop sitting up in here. <laughs> y'all ain't leaving me. Y'all going to hang out. Y'all stay until I leave. I ain't playing. I get through singing, girl. I got just what I needed. Hallelujah. No, you staying here. Mm -mm. No. We all going to the crib together. That's it. So, so I, I usually talk like this, honestly. I, 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 I'm kind of just... I'm vacillating a little bit. I know I'm a preach, but I'm kind of vacillating with this song selection thing. So, um, can I sing some old stuff? Yeah. I mean, can, can I take y'all back for a little bit, just a little bit? Y'all ready to roll with me? Are y'all ready to roll with me? Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. It sounds like about 12 of y'all in here. Y'all ready to roll with me? Okay, that's it. T, let's, let's take it back, see if they know that this old stuff. Let me see if y'all know this. I've had my share of ups and downs Times when there was no one around But God came and spoke these words to me Praise will come to use the enemy Sing it, y'all I've had my share of ups and downs Times when there was Everybody sing it, sing it, say oh. 
That's for the St. Mark. That's for the St. Mark. St. Mark chapter 8. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around, around only see, only see the worst in me. Wish I had a witness in this place today. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around. See the worst in me. Oh, he was saying a witness. Why don't y'all please help me say he saw when everyone else, when everyone else could only see. Does anybody have that testimony tonight? That I gotta know, should I gonna go to know? Everyone else, and everyone else, and everyone else, and everyone only see the worst in me. And I sang my verse one time, just one time, please. He is mine, I am his. It doesn't matter what I did. He only sees me of who I am. Oh, 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 oh. He's mine and I am his. It doesn't matter what I did. But he only sees me of who I am. Help me sing it. Say da 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 that he is mine. I am 
I'm living. Father, we thank you. We give you glory tonight. We honor you for this moment. We thank you for this time. Now, God, we pray that you'd walk up and down each and every aisle, that you would hit each and every seat. Sin on each and every person. Do not allow them to leave here the same way they came into these doors, but indeed, allow there to be a metamorphosis, a change that takes place. Throw your weight around, execute your will and your authority in this house. We made up in our minds, purpose in our hearts that we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory. Now, God, indeed, anoint me afresh and anew, the anointing that causes teaching and preaching to be easy, where yokes will not be broken, because indeed, broken things can and will be fixed. The yokes will be destroyed under the weight of your glory. I thank you in advance, Lord God, because I sense your presence in this place, because they brought you with them. And since we're all here together, we have a mentality and mindset that we're not going to leave here the same way we came, nor we're going to leave here without getting exactly what we came here for. So God, do that what you do best. Just show up and show out. May it be our minds, purpose, and our hearts. We'll forever give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody in this place said amen. amen. Mm, wherever I go, let your spirit follow. I find pleasure if in the valley I really don't care. I'll go through the wilderness, shadows, blackness. I will not. long as you are there, oh, wherever I go, let your spirit follow me. Oh, now I see you I need and with your help gonna deny myself put my hand in yours oh, 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 oh now I see that it's you I need and with your help gonna deny myself Put my hand in yours. Oh, 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 now I see it's you I need, and with your help, gonna deny myself. Put my hand in yours. That's going to say Mark chapter number eight quickly. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. I'm an expository preacher. In other words, I like to deal directly with the text upon my completion. I'm exegeting the text to the best of my ability. I go to my seat. Note what the writer says. Verse number 22, it says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and then him out of town, and when he had spit, on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, neither go into the town, tell it to any in the town. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Here's the do as there will be blessed. You may be seated. 
the writer says something that explains the profile as we begin to look at this particular passage of scripture. There was a particular blind man that they brought to Jesus, and the reason why they brought the blind man to Jesus is because they wanted Jesus to touch him. The Bible says that Jesus reaches out, takes the blind man by the hand, leads him out of the city. When he gets him out of the city, the text declares that he spits in the man's face, lays hands on him, asks him a very simple question, asks him, what does he see? The man says that I see men as trees walking. Then he lays hands on him again, and he saw every man clearly. Y'all missed it one more time. <clears throat> there was this blind dude that they brought to Jesus. And the reason why they brought him to Jesus is because they wanted Jesus to touch him. The Bible says that Jesus reaches out and takes him by the hand, leads him out of the city. When he gets him out of the city, he spits in the man's face, lays hands on him, asks him a very strange question, saying, what do you see? The man responds, I see men as trees walking. Then he lays hands on him again, and he saw every man clearly. Y'all missed it one more time. <clears throat> There was this blind brother that they brought to Jesus, and the reason why they brought him to Jesus is because they wanted Jesus to touch him. The Bible says Jesus reached out, takes him by the hand, leads him out of the city. When he gets him out of the city, he spits in the man's face, and then after spitting in the man's face, he asked him a very strange question. He said, what do you see? The man responds, I see ministries walking. Then the Bible says that he lays hands on him again, and he saw every man clearly. Y'all missed it one more time, one more time. <clears throat> There was this blind bro that they brought to Jesus, and the reason why they brought him to Jesus is because they wanted Jesus to touch him. The Bible says that Jesus reaches out, takes him by the hand, leads him out of the city. When he gets him out of the city, he spits in the man's face. Then he lays hands on him, asks him a strange question, said, man, what do you see? The man looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Then the text declares that he lays hands on him again. He lays hands on him again. He lays hands on him again, and he saw everyone clearly. I just, I just need you to help me, if you could, with, with this particular thought. I need you to touch somebody on your right or your left, look him in the face, and tell him, say, neighbor. neighbor. Some of y'all still looking at me. I said, touch your dog on neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. In this season of my life, he's adjusting my vision. I want to talk about for a little while today. Just look at somebody and say, he's adjusting my vision. He is adjusting my vision. I understand you here, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, all of you who are part of the household of faith, indeed because of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which has in turn made us all heirs and again joint heirs. Uh, Bishop, I have often heard it argued. I have often heard it argued, Bishop, that reality is not an absolute. I've often heard it argued, Bishop, that reality is not an absolute, that each individual, if you will, has his or her own perception of reality. The implication is that because each of us perceives the world through our own eyes, that reality itself changes literally from person to person. While, my beloved brothers and sisters, this is true that every person that sits under the sound of my voice, that you all perceive reality differently. What I've learned, beloved brothers and sisters, is that reality could care less about our individual perceptions. The reason being is because reality does not change to adapt to our personal viewpoints. Reality is what it is. Reality without question is fact. Reality without question is truth. Reality, however, beloved brothers and sisters, is not always known, which is where perception of reality comes in. While reality, family, is a fixed factor in the equation of life, perception of reality is a variable. This is why it is so very important that we learn how to differentiate between a principle and an opinion. Just touch somebody and say, he's going somewhere. The most significant aspect, beloved brothers and sisters, of a principle is that it can neither be created nor altered. Thus, a principle is the essence, if you will, of reality. It is what it is, and I found out that it's up to us as individuals to discover it. The problem arises, however, when people refuse 
to accept the reality that a principle can only be discovered. And instead, they choose to believe that, it can cre uh, that they can create their own principles, which means that they believe that they can create their own reality. And that is a belief that can lead to disastrous consequences, and not only disastrous consequences, but major error. Now, many of you all may be asking, as I begin to move forward in this dialogue and the conversation, what does this have to do with anything tonight, Bishop Marvin? Because I came for a concert tonight, and the reality is, is that you're talking about reality versus principle. You're talking about opinion and concept and thought. What does this have to do with anything as it pertains to tonight and where we're going in this conversation? Well, my thing is, is as I begin to deal with this whole concept, I, I believe, beloved brothers and sisters, that this is the problem that is happening in the 21st century church. I believe that the problem that we're having in the 21st century church is that people are choosing, if you will, to try to create their own principles rather than discovering the principle of what the word reveals that cannot be altered. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church, but I'm going someplace. In other words, beloved brothers and sisters, I believe that's what's happening is, is that people are trying, if you will, in the church to create a perception of God that's not reality. And because we're trying to create a perception of God that's not reality, it's putting us in a position where we as individuals cannot become and or be everything that God has called us to be because of the simple fact that we are locking God into a particular concept of who he is rather than allowing him to be who he said he was from the beginning of time. Many of us under the sound of my voice were stuck and the reason why we're stuck is because of how we perceive our God. I had to teach my church a long time ago, family, that the same God that can heal a headache can heal cancer. It, it, it's, it's not different power, it's the same power. The problem is how you perceive your God. So what God is doing in this particular season and time in the lives of each and every individual that I believe, that what he is doing in this particular day and time is God is taking each and every one of us through a process of adjustment. And the reason why he's taking us through a process of adjustment because he wants each and every one of you all to know that he's tired of you seeing him the way that you desire to see him. But it's time for you to perceive him the way that he desires to be seen. I wish I could get a witness in this place. And that's what leads us to our text tonight because when we begin to look at this particular passage of scripture, it literally begins to show us, if you will, how it is that God is about to deal with each and every one of us. Because the reality is, beloved brothers and sisters, that whenever God wants to make something happen in our lives, that he takes us through process. God is quiet up in here. I'll say it one more time. I'm going to get to your song in a minute. But I want you to understand that whenever God wants to do something in your life, he takes you through process. And what I've learned is, Bishop Thomas, I've learned that the reason why many of us struggle with this whole concept and aspect of process is because we live in a microwave age. And because we live in a microwave age, we're not willing, if you will, to go through the process. I, I, some of y'all looking at me strange. I, 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 was, I was born and I was growing up in the time, beloved brothers and sisters, where we didn't have what they call microwave. When I was a little bitty boy, they didn't have a microwave. And every Saturday morning, when my father was still at the house with us, me and my brothers would get up and we'd go downstairs. And, you know, back when I was growing up, cartoons didn't come on all day. Lord, help me in this place. Cartoons only came on on Saturdays from 9 to 12. We went downstairs and... On Saturday mornings, my father would do something amazing every Saturday morning rather than us eating cookie crisp, rather than us eating, if you will, uh, sugar snacks. My father would get up every Saturday morning and he would make us bake sweet potatoes. Every morning we'd get up, we'd go downstairs and daddy would say, y'all sit down and y'all watch the television and we, we would cut on Super Friends. I can't get no help in this place. And, we would watch Super Friends, and while we were watching Super Friends, every now and then, we would see something that would say something like, Conjunction, Junction, what's your function? I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I... See, y'all know what I'm talking about up in here. 
And the reason why we had to sit there, the reason why we had to sit there, Bishop Brown, is because of the simple fact that it took approximately 45 minutes in order to make that baked sweet potato. My father would cut the oven on and would put it on about 450 degrees, and then he would wrap that sweet potato up in some aluminum foil. And he would stick it in there for about 45 minutes, and we would smell the aroma. We would smell it, and as we smelt the aroma of the potato, our taste buds began to raise up, and then Daddy would pull that hot potato out, and he would cut that booger down the middle, and he would put some brown sugar or some molasses and some butter, and he would mix that thing up, and me and my brothers would eat it like it was steak. But nowadays, beloved brothers and sisters, we don't have to wait as long for a sweet potato no more. All we got to do is just poke some holes in that joker, put it in the microwave oven for three minutes on one side, turn it over, put it on three minutes for the other side, and then as soon as that six minutes up, we can cut it down the middle, put something in it, and we got a sweet potato. But see, that's the problem that God has with us. The problem that God has with us is we want a six-minute miracle. We want a six-minute turnaround. We want a six-minute deliverance. And God is saying, I got to take you through process. And the reason why I got to take you through process is because I want to make sure that you're mature enough to handle what I'm going to bless you with. As well as I want to ensure that you got the capacity to hold on to it. I don't want God to give me anything that I cannot hold on to. So what God does is he says I'm going to take you through process in order to ensure and to make sure that you can hold on to and hang on to what I'm going to bless you with. So as we begin to look at this particular passage of scripture, it literally begins to show us how it is that God's going to adjust us as individuals. Now when we begin to look at this particular text, understand that there are three central theme figures in the text. The first, the first central theme figure of the text is known by name. It, he is identified by name. He is known as Jesus the Christ. But then the second central theme figure in the text, he is not identified by his name, Bishop Brown, but he is literally identified by his disability. He is known as the blind man. But then there is a third central theme figure, but this third central theme figure is not an individual, but it is a group of individuals. And this group of individuals made the decision to bring the blind man to Jesus. Now let me pause here. Because we can assume one of two things as it pertains to why these group of individuals decided to bring the blind man to Jesus. They could have brought the blind man to Jesus because they loved him. They could have brought the blind man to Jesus because they were concerned about him. They could have brought the blind man to Jesus because they cared about him. But they also could have brought the blind man to Jesus because they were sick of him. They could have brought the blind man to Jesus because they were tired of him. They could have brought the blind man to Jesus because they just wanted to get rid of him. But no matter what the reason was that they brought the blind man to Jesus, the significant and the important part of the text is that they brought the blind man to Jesus. Now let me pause here because I want you to understand family that everybody that brings you to church don't always bring you because they love you sometimes folks bring you because they just sick and tired of you but whatever the reason why they bring you to church you ought to just be glad that they brought you to church look at somebody and tell them say I don't need to know your reason I'm just glad that you brought me y'all looking at me strange just look at somebody else and say I don't need to know your reason I'm just glad that you brought me so the Bible begins to show us something extremely profound. The Bible says that they bring the blind men to Jesus. And what does Jesus do? Catch this. The first thing that Jesus does is he decides to function in his purpose by executing process. Now, it's quiet. I, I'm going to get to your song. Just pray with me. I promise you we're going to get there. The, the, the Bible says that they bring the blind man to Jesus. And the first thing that Jesus does is he begins to function in his purpose by executing process. How, how does he function in his purpose by executing process? I'm so very glad you asked me. The first thing that Jesus does, catch this, is when they bring the blind man to Jesus, the first thing Jesus does is he reaches out, takes him by the hand, leads him out the city. Y'all missed it one more time, one more time, one more time. Y'all come going with me. So, so watch me now. Again, 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 again. But bring the blind man to Jesus. The first thing Jesus does is he begins to function in this purpose by executing process. How does he do it? I'm so very glad you asked me. What he does is, is he reaches out, takes him by the hand, leads him out the city. Y'all missed it. Come here, man. God. Come here, come here, come on, come on. Quick, 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 quick. I need you to come up here. I need you to come up here. I need you to come up here. Come on, man, quick. Because I only got about 25 more minutes. You got to hang up with me. Oh, no, so stand up here now. Let me, let me see something. 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 
Yep, I got the right one. 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 Now watch this. Watch this, family. Watch this. He's, 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 he's blind. And because of his inability to see, he could not forecast his own future. He's, 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 he's blind. And because of his inability to see, he had to rely on other people's favor in order to thrive and survive. Y'all making me work hard tonight. He's, he's, he's blind. And because of his inability to see, he was breathing but not living. Why? Because without vision, people perish. So what Jesus does is, is he begins to function in his purpose by executing process. What does he do? He reaches out, takes him by the hand, and he leads him out the city. Y'all missed it one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Y'all got to help me now. Listen, I got to get to your song. Come on. He's blind. And because of his inability to see, he could not forecast his own future. He's blind because of his inability to see. He had to rely on other people's favor in order to thrive and survive. He's blind, and because of his inability to see, he was breathing but not living. Because without vision, people perish. So what he had to do, watch this, Jesus had to function in his purpose by executing process. What does he do? He reaches out, takes him by the hand, leads him out to the city. Y'all missed it one more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. Uh, he's, he's, he's blind. Because of his inability to see, he could not forecast his own future. He's, he's blind because of his inability to see. He had to rely on other people's favor in order to thrive and survive. He's, he's blind because of his inability to see. He was breathing but not living because without vision, people perish. But the first thing that Jesus does is he functions in his purpose by executing process. What does he do, Bishop? Thank you for asking. He reaches out, takes him by the hand, leads him out to sit. I got to pause here, Bishop. I got to pause here just for a few minutes. If you just let me pause for a few minutes because I don't see nowhere in the word of God what Jesus Jesus asked the man his condition. I don't see nowhere in the word of God where Jesus asked the man his name. I don't see nowhere in the word of God where Jesus asked the man what did he need. All I see is that when they brought the blind man to Jesus, that Jesus reached for him. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm so very glad that when my life was jacked up, that God didn't give me no questionnaire, but all he did was reach for me. When I was sick and deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply sick within, sick in the rise of but the master of the sea heard my despair and cried from the waters. He reached. Just look at somebody say, he reached for me. Some of y'all still looking at me. I said, touch your neighbor and tell him, say, he reached for me. So watch this. He's, he's blind. Because of his inability to see, he could not forecast his own future. Because of his inability to see, he had to rely on other people's favor in order to thrive and survive. Because of his inability to see, he was breathing but not living. Because without vision, people perish. And the first thing that Jesus does is he reaches out, takes him by the hand, leads him out the city. But hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to pause one more time. Because I don't see nowhere in the word, Bishop Brown, that as Jesus begins to lead him out the city, that the man resisted his leading. I wish y'all would help me preach. I don't see nowhere in the word of God where the man begin to ask questions, where in the world are you taking me? I don't see nowhere in the word of God where the man tried to pull away. All I see is by his actions, he's declaring wherever he leads me. <laughs> I'm just going to straight up follow. And I just wonder, is there anybody in here under the sound of my voice that made up in your mind, God, I don't know where you're taking me, but I do know wherever you're taking me is far better than where I was to text. I'm, I'm almost to your song. The text says he's blind. And because of his inability to see, he could not forecast his own future, he's blind. Because of his inability to see, he had to rely on other people's favor in order to thrive and survive, he's blind. And because of his inability to see, he was breathing but not living. Because without vision, people perish. And the Bible says that Jesus reached for him, takes him out the city. But, but, but I was not impressed by Jesus leading him out the city until I began to realize what he led him out of. When he leads him out the city, beloved brothers and sisters, there's two things that he did. The first, there's two things that he took him away from. Can, can I tell you what the two things are? I, I, I promise you I'm almost at your song. I got, I got 20 more minutes. I'm going to get there. The first thing that he does is when he takes him out the city, watch this, he removes him from his comfort zone. Yeah. 
See, see, some of y'all, some of y'all have been talking about great things and better days and, and God moving you to new levels and dimensions and, and you're expecting great things. But you need to understand that whenever God adjusts you, the first thing that he's going to do is he's going to remove you from that which is comfortable. And sometimes the struggle in life is that, God, can't you bless me in this comfortable place? God said no. And the reason being is because I don't want nobody taking credit for what I'm about to do in your life. So I've got to take you out of your... Here's my problem. Here's, here's my problem now. My problem now is that he's blind. And if you know anything about someone who has the absence of sight or that is blind, they have to be in comfortable surroundings in order to navigate. They, they got to know that there's 22 steps to the bathroom. They got to know that the kitchen is 17 steps to the left. They got to know in order to get to their bedroom, they got to go up 22 steps, two feet, and then another three steps, and then turn to the left in order to go to their bedroom. Because if they try, watch this, to navigate in surroundings that are not familiar, what will end up happening is, is that they will end up bumping into something and having some self-inflicted wounds. I got to stay here for a few minutes. Because that could be the reason why you hurt right now. Because God was telling you in your blindness that you needed to stand still. But you tried to navigate in surroundings when you weren't familiar. Y'all looking at me strange. So let me come down your street. I think I feel a lighthouse spirit up in here. And my church is a little bit ghetto every now and then. They told you that no good. They told you that he wasn't good to his first baby mama. And now you want to be his next baby mama. But now you're in a messed up situation because you was blinded by love when you should have stood still and trusted what God was trying to tell you the time. First thing it does is he removes him, watch this, he removes him from his comfort zone. But then he does the second thing too. Not only did he remove him from his comfort zone, but he also took him away from people that he thought he needed to thrive and survive. Oh, it's about to get tied up in here now. Because I came to pronounce to some of you that there are some people that you are sitting next to in 2018 that will not be with you in 2019. Because God is about to give you an understanding that the people that you thought you needed to get to your next level are going to be the ones that you need to leave at your last level, the tax. So the Bible says, watch this, it says that he reaches out, takes him by the hand, he leads him out the city. What, what? He's, he's blind. Because of his inability to see, he had to rely on other people's favor in order to thrive and survive. He's, he's blind because of his inability to see. He could not forecast his own future. He's, he's blind because of his inability to see. He was breathing but not living. So Jesus reaches out, takes my hand, leads him out the city. And then this is what's so amazing. He puts him in an isolated place. But then he infuses himself in his isolated space. Y'all missed it, y'all. One more time, one more time, one more time. He, he, he takes him out of the city and he puts him in an isolated place. But then he infuses himself in his isolated space. In other words, he was alone, but he wasn't alone. And see, some of y'all think that when God pulls you out of stuff, just because he may not be speaking does not mean he's not there. You just got to learn that when God pulls you out, you got to trust him to take you through the entire the text. Says that Jesus reaches out, takes my hand, leaves my city, gets him out in the middle of nowhere, but then he does something that messes me up. Jesus decides 
to disrespect a man with a disability. Y'all don't read y'all Bibles. He, Jesus makes a decision to disrespect a man with a disability. Yo, Jesus. Lily of the Valley. Yo, Jesus. Bright and morning star. Yo, Jesus. Emmanuel. Yo, Jesus. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Lion of the tribe of Judah. He made a decision to disrespect a man with a disability by spitting in his face. You ain't got to worry about that. I ain't going to spit in your problem. <laughs> he was getting nervous. <laughs> Look at him. He was shaking. He was like, listen, I'm from Baltimore. If he spit in my face, it's going to be on up in his face. <laughs> Y'all, let's stay in the spirit for a few more minutes. So here it is now. He gets the man out in the middle of nowhere totally and completely trusting him and he disrespects him by spitting in his face. I'm, 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 I'm telling you my problem. I'm telling you my problem. I'm just, my problem is, is that I wouldn't have had a problem if Jesus would have spit in the man's face when they were on the same plane. The man could see, Jesus could see. Jesus spit in the man's face then, at least the man could have. I wouldn't have had a problem if Jesus would have spit in the man's face while he was with his crew. I'm sorry, the people that were attending to his needs. Because if he would have spit in the man's face while he was with them, they could have blocked it or they could have pulled him out the way. But they waited, he waited until he got him out in the middle of nowhere to spit in the man's face, catch this, when he couldn't see it coming. Y'all missed it. One more time, one time, one time. He didn't spit in the man's face while he was, while he could see, because if he could have seen, he could have got out the way. He didn't spit in the man's face while he was with his crew, because if he spit in the man's face while he was with his crew, his crew could have blocked it. His crew could have pulled him out the way. But he waited until he got him out in the middle of nowhere, till he got him to a place where the man totally, completely trusted him. And he decided to spit in the man's face when he could not see it coming. Y'all missed it one more time, one more time. Y'all got to come with me. He, he didn't spit in the man's face while he was with his crew because his crew could have blocked it. His crew could have put him out the way. He waited until he got the man out in the middle of nowhere, totally, completely trusting him to spit in the man's face when he couldn't see it coming. Okay, I got to drop the bomb up in here because I only got 11 more minutes. Uh, see, that's what God's about to do in some of your life. See, the reason why he didn't deal with you while you was with your folks is because he knew they would have tried to pull you out the way. He knew they would have tried to block what he was about to do in your life. So he waited till he got you out in the middle of nowhere. Because what he was about to do in your life is so ridiculous. It's so disgusting that once it hits you, you're going to have to tell everybody, I didn't even see it coming. That's what God's about to do. He's about to hit you with a blessing that's going to blow your mind to the point that you're going to tell everybody, hey, mama, any way he blesses me, I'm just going to be satisfied as anybody here other than me that's ready for a ridiculous blessing to overtake you in this season of your life. He's blind. And he spits in the man's face. Mr. Thomas, this is what messed me up. He spits in the man's face. After he spits in the man's face, he asks the man a crazy question. He says, what do you see? See, that's why you got to read your Bible. I can't get no help here. He spits in the man's face, and then he asks him a question. He says, what do you see? The text says that the man looked up. Y'all missed this, so I'll go past you. Okay, he spits in the man's face, asked the man, what did he see? Scripture says he looked up. 
which would imply that there was no way possible that Jesus and he could have been at the same level when he spit in the man's face. That means in order for Jesus to spit in the man's face, that the man would have had to change his posture in order for Jesus to spit in the man's face and the man to look up. And God sent me by here just to instruct some of y'all. He said, if you want what I want to give you in your life, you've got to learn how to humble yourself. Some of y'all, the reason why you ain't got it yet is because you're trying to stay at the same level. And God says, you got to adjust your position to get what I want to give you in your life, the tax. He spits man's face. Asked the man, what did he see? The man looked up. Said, I see men as trees walking. Now, this is why I messed up now. Because biblical theologians and scholars would tell us and teach us that when he spits in the man's face and asked the man, what did he see? And the man said, I see men as trees walking. They tell us that the man had to go through a process, if you will, of faith building in order for him to see. And they, watch this imply based upon what they feel that his vision was distorted i don't believe that and the reason why i don't believe that because of the simple fact the man was too descriptive in his conversation with jesus he asked the man what did he see the man said i see men as trees walking he didn't say i think i see a few men and they they look like trees that they may be bushes and I don't know if they walking or crawling, but they doing something. That's not what he said. He was absolute in what he saw. He said, I see men. They are as trees and they are walking. So what I believe is I believe that when Jesus lays hands on him, watch this, that he wasn't, his vision was not distorted, but I believe that Jesus released too much in it. Okay, I just, I just messed up. I just messed up. I'm sorry. This is my first time being here. I just messed up. I forgot I was at the Baptist church. So I got to give you my three points, my three points. There, 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 were, there were three touches in the text. The first touch in the text is when he reached out and took him by the hand. That was a touch of compassion. Aren't you glad that he had compassion on you? That when your life was messed up, that he didn't leave you in the state that you was in, but that he loved you enough to reach for you. The second touch, watch this, was not a touch of compassion, but was a touch of revelation. Why? Because when he lays hands on the man and asked him what did he see, he said, I see men and as trees walking. Now, what does that mean, Bishop Marvin? I'm so very glad you asked me because I told you I believe that Jesus released too much in him. So what do you mean he released too much in him? What would make you think that he released too much in him? I believe it based upon one word that the man said in the text. What's the word that he said in the text? He said, I see men as trees. Now, let me pause right here because whenever you see the word tree in connection to man in Scripture, it speaks to a man being solidified. It speaks to a man being established. It speaks to a man being rooted. It speaks to a man being grounded. Blessed is the man that walketh not the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law does he meditate both day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So I believe that when Jesus lays hands on him the second time, what he was showing him was, is he was giving him revelation of how he was supposed to see himself in the future. He said, you've been blind hanging with people and because you've been blind hanging with them, you feel less than who you are. But I got to tell you who you are. And before I can get you to a natural space, I got to give you revelation about who you are. I need you to see yourself not as blind. I need you to see yourself as established. I need you to see yourself as rooted. I need you to see yourself as grounded. I need you to see your health growing. I wonder, is there anybody here here, that God's giving you a revelation about who you are to be even before you become who you are to become the text first touch was a touch of compassion the second touch was a touch of revelation and impartation I need you to understand that who you were is not who you're going to be Don't you ever 
let nobody tell you who you are. Why? Because you never allow people to define you who did not create you. You need to let them know just because you saw me do this does not mean that that's who I am. There is somebody great on the inside of me. First touch was a touch of compassion. The second touch was a touch of revelation. But then there's a third touch because he touched him for the third time. And that touch, catch this, was a touch of practical application. He said, now that I've shown you who you are to become, now I need to adjust you so that you can walk it out until you get there. Okay. Okay. I got, I got time. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Bishop, because what I just did is I dealt with verse 22 through 25. But to be honest with you, that was not what I came to preach. That was just my opening statement. What I came to preach was verse 26. Because verse 26 teaches us something that we don't talk about often. Verse 22 through verse 25 tells us how to get vision back. Verse 26, though, teaches us how to manage it. See, because it's one thing for us to come here and have a fire ignited on the inside of us. But if we don't know how to manage the fire, it's going to burn out. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. So 26 tells us how it is that we're supposed to man. Y'all do understand management and maintaining. If, 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 if you have a house, if you have a house, you got to cut the grass. You got to manage and maintain the house if you... If you have a car, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take that car and get an oil service. If you got an apartment, you gotta throw the garbage out. You just can't let the garbage pile up in the house. If you got a weave, I don't care if it's a full in, full enclosure or the sewing. You got to tighten up them braids. You. You, you know about maintenance, don't you? You just don't get a manicure once a year. You just don't get a... You understand maintenance? So 26 is what I came to preach. What does Jesus do? He restores his sight. He puts him back on his feet. And then he gives him one instruction. He tells him to go home. He says, go home. Y'all missed it. He says, go home. Y'all still missed it. He says, go home. Very simple question. How would he even know what home was? He was blind. So in order for him to know what home was, there had to be a point in his life where he had to be able to see. And somehow in this journey, he lost his vision. I stop by here to tell you that sometimes life can be so treacherous that you can lose your way. But aren't you glad to know that you serve a savior who's able to revive, who's able to rejuvenate, who's able to put it back together again. And once he puts it back together, he'll give you one instruction. And that instruction is go home. Look at
at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, say, hey, neighbor, in this season of my life, once I get my vision back, I'm going home. Where is home? Home is the place of origin. It's the place where you first believed and received. Look at your neighbor and tell them for me one time, I'm about to go home because home is where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. Wait a minute. The first thing he tells him to do is he tells him to go home. But then the next thing he says is he says, neither go into the town. Y'all missed it. Marissa, they missed it, girl. He tells him to go home. I said I wasn't going to do that tonight. But then he tells him to neither go into the city. Y'all missed it. He tells him to go home. But then he tells him neither go into the city. Which would imply that his home was not in the place where he was residing in. But somehow, some way, because he was blind, he ended up finding himself in a place that he never should have been in. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, neighbor, now that God done pulled you out, tell him, say, you can't go back. I wish I had a witness in here. I said, touch your neighbor, say, neighbor, now that God done brought me out, I can't go back to my struggle. I can't go back to my first thing he tells them is he tells them to go home. Touch somebody say go home. The next thing he tells them is he tells them neither go into the town. Touch somebody say you can't go back. But the third and the most important thing that he tells him is he says neither talk to the people that's in the town. I'm trying to tell you how to maintain your vision. This is what God sent me by here to tell you. I don't want to holler this, but if you grab a hold of this, it's going to change your life. When God pulls you out of some things, I said, wait a minute, God. You told him not to go back into the town? He said, yes. I said, but you told him not to talk to the people either. He said, yes. I said, why did you tell him not to talk to the people? It's very simple, Marvin, because I was releasing him from explanation. Y'all missed it. I saw him go past you. What are you trying to tell me, preacher? I'm trying to tell you when God pulls you out this time, you ain't got to go back and explain to nobody why you ain't coming back. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God has released me. And now I ain't got to explain that to no Negro why I ain't coming back. Look at your neighbor. Tell him for the last time. When I leave here this time, I'm not telling nobody why I'm not coming back. But if you see me and you ask me why, I just got one explanation. Jesus told me to tell you that I can't come back. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice that made up your mind? Get it. 
blind man. The blind man. Couldn't go back. Couldn't go back and tell those from Bethsaida why he wasn't coming back. However, when he got home, When he got home, I could see family saying, where you been? We ain't seen you in a long time. How did you make it? He looked at him and said, never would have made it. Never could have made it. It all. But now I see you. how you were there for me, and now I, I can say. Tell him. Tell him. 
them your eyes are tall. Tell them your But this time you're going to testify about what you learned about yourself. You learned that you were stronger than you thought you were. That even after the enemy hit you with this best shot, you're still standing by the grace of God. Tell somebody, say neighbor, I'm stronger. Say it. Tell them I'm wise to talk. Anybody moving? If y'all could close the doors quickly. I don't want anybody moving. Hear me. This is called fresh fire. One thing I've learned is, is that trials can damper the embers of your life. Huh. And sometimes it can either take them out just totally put your fire out eight years ago my fire was put out my heart was broken beyond compare I didn't know how I was going to make it but I stayed connected to God I stayed on my face And, I, and, I, and, and that was when I learned what that scripture meant. When I'm weak, that's when I'm made strong. Because at that point in time, I learned how to totally trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways, I learned how to really acknowledge him and heal direct. Some of us need to understand that the pain that we're experiencing now is literally just an alarm that a change is coming. That's, that's what pain is. When, when you feel a pain in your leg, you go to the doctor. It's, it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's just an alarm to tell you need to check some things out. You need to readjust. Because there's a path that God's trying to take us all on. And that's why he's suggesting your vision. Because he says, I need you to broaden your perspective. You've been limiting me too long. I'm bigger than what you believe. My power is greater than your greatest concept of who I am. 
I'm all that. You just need to let me be who I say that I am in your life. I may never get back here again, y'all. This may be my first and my last time. I did. That's why I did all the singing I possibly could, just in case y'all didn't enjoy the preaching. But before I leave here, somebody's fire needs to be ignited. Because the reality is, is that unless you got a real relationship with him, you will stay blind. You still blind. This is what I want you to do. I need everybody to bow their head and close their eyes. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I don't know. This is what this is the way I feel led of God to challenge. As everyone is said to bow their eyes closed, there may be someone here in the sound of my voice that doesn't know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power of your sins. Having been baptized in the water, having received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God is saying that today is the day that He wants to regenerate you. For if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. As everyone's head is by their eyes closed in obedience, if you're here today, listen, if you're here today, main floor balcony, and you don't know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the power of your sins, what I need you to do is, right from your seat, as everyone's head is by their eyes closed, I just need you to slip your hand up real high. Slip it up high. Bishop Marvin, I'm that one. I, I don't have a relationship with him. I need to establish it. Slip it up high. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Slip it up high. I see those hands. I see them. I see them, I see them, I see them. Put them down, put them down. Now there may be someone else here saying, you know what, Bishop Marvin, listen. I had a relationship and I walked away. I want you to know that he's married to the backslider. You may have walked away from him, but he's never walked away from you. He's literally standing with his arms stretched wide, ready to receive you just as you are. You can't fix it because you didn't break it. You gotta give it back to the man who possesses the ability to fix it. If you're here today and you're saying, you know, Bishop, I walked away and I need to get back in right relationship with him. Slip your hand up. Don't be ashamed. Slip it up high. I need to see those hands. Slip it up high. Slip it up high. Slip oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I see them. I see them. Put your hands down. Now, let me tell you what the Word of God says. The Word of God says this. If you be ashamed of me before me, I'll be ashamed of you before the Father which is in heaven. You didn't lift your hand because I just suggested it. God knew this day was going to be. Tell it. This is a divine appointment for you. Today is your day of transformation and change. And in transformation and change, God is about to move you to a place that was great to a place called greater. That's what he's about to do. Now listen to me. If you had your hand up in either one of those, please, either one, I don't need you to look around. I don't need you to see who's moving. What I need you to do very quickly is I need you just to grab your things and come down to this altar right now. Move quickly, come on. That's it, come on. You know who I'm talking to, come on. Move, 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 let them out, let them out, let them move. That's it, come on, come on. Come on, that's it, come on. I want just come, 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 come. Shh, shh. Keep it soft, I just need them to come. Just come, come, come. That's it, that's it. From all over this building, move quickly. Come on, come on. If y'all clap, they'll come. If y'all clap, they'll come. If y'all clap, they'll come. If you clap, they'll come. They're moving. Y'all need to be active like, listen, that's somebody's daughter you need to praise God for. That could be your son. Y'all need to praise God for them as they come. Come on, look at these souls. Come on, help me bless them as they come. Come on, y'all. Y'all ain't happy enough for me. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, and y'all acting like this is normal. Come on, give him praise. Open up your mouths as they're coming. Come on, help me bless come them. On, come on, if you come keep on. clapping, they'll keep coming. If you keep clapping, they're, they're coming from come the balcony. On, come on, come they're on. coming from the balcony. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to bless him. Somebody ought to thank God for him. They're coming. Oh, oh. Wonderful change, wonderful change has come. Come on, come on, people They're are coming. still coming. They're, They're coming, coming down, down the side. They're, They're coming down. Change. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Come on.
want you to get your home run. Listen, last plea, Bishop, I promise you I'll be done. Last plea. There's some people sitting in their seat that did not move. I need you to be a witness to somebody sitting close to you. I need y'all just to do this for me. Grab one person by the hand, look them in the face and smile at them. You might not even know them. You've been sitting next to them all night. Ain't even introduce yourself to them. Look at them and say, neighbor. Okay, it sounds like three people in here. I'm going to try this again. Look at the person sitting close to you. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Say, are you born again? Tell them, say, if you're not born again, you do not have to leave here the same way you came into these doors. Tell them, say, neighbor. If you do not want to walk to the front by yourself, say, I will walk with you to the front. Ask to say, neighbor, do you want to go? If they say they want to go, I wish you would bring them to Jesus. If they say they want to go, I need you to bring them to Jesus. If they say, see, they're bringing them, they're bringing them, they're bringing them. still coming church they still coming look at God tonight look at God I'm gonna ask members wonderful chain I'm gonna ask members of M2 ministry if you would join come right over here to the side members of M2 I need you to help tonight some of all, even if you're on the choir, members of M2, if you would join our new members ministry, some of our preachers and diaconate, I need you to join them also. David, you ready? Hey, come on, give God praise for what he has done this month today. We're going to we're gonna take them out both sides. Look at God. I, look at God. This is fresh fire, you somebody. Won't you just... All of you on this side, won't you just go this way? All on this side, won't you just go this way? Look at what God has done. M2 ministry members, can you help us out? We're going to need somebody to be with all of these folk who are walking out. Just come right on. Some of those on the choir need your help. Deja, if you can bring that row and y'all go right this way with David Myron, if you take some of the leaders this way, look at God. Come on, let's praise God for what he's doing. Let's praise God. Somebody else is walking. Somebody else is walking. Somebody else is walking. Somebody else is coming. Praise God. Look at the Lord. Tomorrow night, is our last night, but the fire will keep burning. Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton will be with us tomorrow night to seal, look at somebody and say, to seal the deal. So you want to be here tomorrow night. Dinner will start at five, the doors open. There have been people here waiting when the doors open. Tomorrow night will be no different. Look at somebody and tell them, don't miss it. Anybody been helped tonight? I need you to reach across the aisle and hold somebody's hand. We're getting ready to go home. My God, my God. Would you just holler out loud, thank you, Bishop. What a God we serve. Even me, Lord. Even me. Even me. What you've seen happen tonight 
is the start of a journey for some people. Those of you who are on the journey, God has something for you to step up to do now too. They stepped up to start. You have to step up to the next thing he's presenting you. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. What we have seen, felt, and heard tonight is the reality of God and he never changes we just have to stay on his frequency can you say it for me quiet as we get ready to go home Everybody.